Welcome back to the Music Hacks Network, guys. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, I am Chris Bailey, your host. Today we have a great drummer in studios with us. His name is Ricardo Bolo Fras. Please remember to hit that subscribe icon as we are on our way to a thousand K subscribers. Help us grow. Hit that subscribe icon, like the video and share the video. All right, so that Ricardo, we, we know your right name, um, Ricardo, but you are better known as Bolo Fras. How did you get that name, yeah, man. Bolo Fras? Well, it is two person give me the name. One give me Bolo, and another one give me Frost. So I think I was in grade four or grade five in primary school. We you know those, those days we were using um, the white lime to mark the field. So I was in a, I can't remember, I was in a black shirt and I have a no shirt. So I'm a, my body is well built. I don't <laughs> have to go to the gym. So one of the guys, his name is Romy, look at me and say, yo, you look like Bolo in a movie, you know. <laughs> that time I, I was around 10, because I was grade four. So I'm at the field and it was sports day, as I said, with white lime. And I was all in the white lime and the whole of white, white up. So I said, yo, a Bolo if you name me now. So that guy gave me the name, Bolo. So my grandmother never really liked the name that I know. All my first grandmother would say, yo, stop calling Bolo. His name is Ricardo and Ricky. So, when the frost come, you know, um, I went to Greg Anderson Church, <laughs> and this youth named Stephen that played drum. And the mother said, oh, yeah, man, a bowl of frost, man. What a one bowl of frost? Just, just out of the blues. And from this, <laughs> from this, uh, the man just, he just take on, bowl of frost, bowl of frost, bowl of frost. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, it's amazing, some of these, mm -hmm. um, nicknames that that musicians have sometimes I, i've said it so many times on on this program all right so now we know yeah. where that name came from all right so um ricardo i'm yeah, going to yeah. ask you just to tell us something about yourself how did you grow up who is ricardo yeah all right ricardo Ball of us, O'Neill, Anthony Callahan. Yes, people. Pronounce it Callahan, yeah. G silent. Well, when I was growing up, you know, it wasn't that easy. Yeah, because back in the days of my school, well, I tell you, say, pants, the right ankle, come up. And when they call you, you measure your pants you now in the water. <laughs> and time was very rough for a level. But they have a thing that if you want good, you have to um, work hard for what, for what you want in life. Yeah, and go to church and something that's so I'm a humble person. Yeah, easy going and I'm a people's person by the way. Yeah. <laughs> cool, so, cool. That me basically just humble, you know. All right. Um, do you have any siblings? Any brothers and sisters? Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, say so, um I think about eight brothers from my father's side. Uh Four and my mother and two sisters and my mother. So no brother, no sisters and my mother. I'm a father, but two sisters and my mama's side. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, and I'm the only person who say, yo, music, you know, around the world. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, what's yeah. the relationship, uh, um, though? Because I I don't have so many siblings, so I, I would definitely not know what it is like to, to be among so many um persons in the in the home what what is that experience like growing up okay all right for me when i was growing up you know it's most mostly my cousin i grew up because i grew up with my grandma may god bless her so because so, uh, she passed away a couple of weeks ago yeah so it's our, our cousins so female and male in, and we are jail together so all jail, we never have a fight we never mm -hmm. have a fight this are my cousin came on. We always play cricket, football, we fly kite. And we always get beaten, you know, because I was a jacking motor house, because he was a book fan. So we just 
Dah kau min man long hours man. Kau be a man. Kau be a boy. Kau play some marble. <laughs> we usually use. Then they, they, hey, they, those days we couldn't even buy one bath. Um, what do you call those balls? Tennis balls. So we use the tin, milk tin, to play cricket. Mm. And we use the young silver orange to play cricket. So those days, man, was good. I tell you, it was lovely. Well, we, we enjoy our, our childhood days. Awesome. Yeah, man. All right. So how, how did you actually get into music now? Hey, boy, that, that question, there, I always want to question me as a smile, you know, and just say, oh, it's a good thing, because my two sides of family go to Revival Church. So I always go to Revival Church and I play the ghost king drum. I play it on the side. So I play the smaller drum. And my cousin, she's a female. We all play the bass drum. Boom, 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 boom. So while she play boom, I play. So I was a play Revival. So them have a drum set. So every rally, this guy named Andre Richard come to our church, come play drum set. Man, Greg. Come and play. So we hear this beat. Put it to put it to put it to put it to. So we get fascinated by that beat. And I said, I want to learn to play the drums. So okay. that Saturday, that, that, that day, I, the next morning, I should say, because it was a Sunday night. They always keep rallying. So the Monday morning, I went in my grandmother's fall cup, take mm. some bath. <laughs> we what? watch those. Yeah. And those days we have a lot of edgings, you know, or, 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 and flowers. So I break, mm. a, a lot of them break down. So I just go and make drumstick. So I mm. go in the cupboard and I was like, what is the sound? What is the sound? And all I can remember is put it, it, put it, it, put it, it, it. <laughs> so I will go in the cupboard and cut one of the edges and I use a zinc for a cymbal. And I was and I will sit on the floor and my heel back would be the bass drum. So I'll be like straight through the day. Right. So when I get up, you know, you know, a young baby, a young baby butt, when the tough got it just born, my heel back was red. Red. Whoa, whoa, and soft. whoa. And I couldn't walk sometimes. Yeah, seriously. Mm. <laughs> and I get a lot of beat too, because I keep bursting up the butt and popping down the floors in the yard. Mm. to play music and I can remember um I was in grade four and the kids were teasing me that I poke a church ago and I can't play a drum. Mm. So those days back in the days we had some cheer. I have the pin in the chair you can take out the pin. So what I did is you know, <laughs> I take out two pins out of the chair and I put it in my bag. And when I reach school now I hide the the cardboard part of the of the pin I, I hide that part so I push up the part of it and say hey is the two drumsticks. <laughs> this is what I used to play drums in church. And those days I was shy to say I go to revival church and they keep mocking me and all these things. You know? Mm-hmm. So we start get groovy right in the classroom and I beat out text and and a whole of vibe to everybody start, you know, the class class mashup. Whoa. Um, the transverse to high school. Yeah. Everything done in high school. All right, so so you were you're <laughs> involved in no, no class, no go on. You, you were involved in the high school band? No, no, because as I said to you, remember, you know, I didn't get no teaching, so revival alone, may I play. Mm. So I did not. Then not tell me I play a jump set, you know? Didn't yeah, man. I play a jump set. I'm, I'm I trying to find out. I'm trying to fun. find out when you actually became a, a pro drummer. When you when you actually started to, oh, to learn the, the, the real thing. thing. The real thing is about 2000 and after I left school, 2000, uh, I, I school left 2000 school, 2003. So 2004 now, mm. to start um, play, I play a day the other day, something there. And then Cesar Colonji, Cesar album really inspired me to really take up drums seriously. With Jai Cry and Thank You Mama and Woman I Need You. And all those songs, and I, I was listening to um, it's 92 FM, and mm. everything that they play, I do my best to play to it. So, this hotel name, Hotel Versal, is in Maypen. Greg and his musical play there, and Bones we play with Jack here, which I'll play there. And I always go there, you know, I always go there and say, Yo, I want to play reggae. So, Bones, you know, that play for Jack here, the keyboard player, said to me one day, Say, Yo, leave the other alone, man. They have a reggae sound. 
just leave their yard and come, 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 jail with them and learn some songs. And big up to Bully, they play in a scene band. Yeah, man, they want to teach me a lot. So by listening to them, I start get, getting, get myself to work, practice and listen a lot of reggae songs. A lot, I mean, a whole heap of reggae songs are from old school. <laughs> I mean, I say, boy, sometimes I question myself and say, oh, I oh, you know so much of them old school songs. Mm. So it's, if I'm going from 2006, we really take it up first uh, professionally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So who are some of the persons that have, that have actually influenced you? All right. This youth named Andre, God bless him so in past, in past time. He was the first youth to really look at me and say, yo, I love what you play, you know, keep going. And there was a thing that they call double kick when I play like a stoker, but it's a mental time. Okay, you know, so I did that. So I asked him, then I went on a jump set. So I asked him one day on the road, say, Andre, why you play double? He walked over to a light post. <laughs> he walked over to a light post and he play like the Solomon show by the light post. Mm. And me now say, hey, all right, so I go home now. I remember saying, we never jump set no more. And I go and do the same thing. And just, and just, and, and from that, and from that day, he was one of the inspiration you to me. And then Gregory, they call him Bully. That youth man, I tell you, I hear that man play reggae. When we say reggae, man, I hear that man. <laughs> you know, it, you know? <laughs> and it's near sweet. So you know, so that give you the real sound. So I say, yeah, me want to learn it, um. You tell me, say, say, all right, me want to go tour, me want to play in a hotel, and me want to think musically, so they put the work in. Yeah, so mm. they're one of the youth them uh, really inspire me. So I, I, I know you you actually got into the, the hotel business and then probably into the, the, the shipping industry. Yeah. All right, I, I wanted to, to give us a little history about how you got into the playing into the hotel industry first. And then we're going to look okay. on, on some of the things that you did on the ship. All right, no problem, man. All right. 2008, I leave for Negril. And um, I've been there for a while. Then at the ending of 2008, a friend named Roy, he played for Rhythm 2000. So he had a show in um, Tabla Mar. So he couldn't find a drummer. So he called me and said, hey, go to Rio to, go to do the New Year's Eve show. I remember that was the first time ever <laughs> I'm going into a hotel and it was a nice, nice show. And from that day, from that day, 2009, um, ringing 2009, I've ever since I've been in Negro, playing at all of the hotels then. All the hotels then, you know? So it's mm -hmm. a good vibe. Because here what happened. Greg, Greg of all person. I was at his car, his name. Because he's the one who really inspired me, tell me personally, I say, yo, Go to Nigeria because Nigeria is where you learn a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. Not only reggae, but our genre. So Nigeria is like a college. You see? Mm -hmm. So he's the one who really say, yo, go on Nigeria, I'm going to Nigeria and we get into the, um, the hotel sector, learn a lot of songs. I have to know song. First time when we come to Nigeria, you know, now man, we just go on stage and the man in cast on song and the man him say, yo, how oh, do you want to know some more song? But what I did, you know, when, when I was at Versal, I have a book. So I write down every song. <laughs> I write down the pattern, I write down the type of hi hat. I have a one, two, both pop, I have a something, a step hat, or a straight kick. I write it down. So those things stuck in my head. And you usually go rehearsal with Bones, with Rhythm, uh, not Rhythm Plutus, but with Sane Band. Every rehearsal, I think of Song Fest, Western Consciousness, Unity Splash and all, make sure they go and take in all them play for the artists. So when me go and you know, I'm a kid, I say, we never play for the artists, it can the day in my head already. It's a stick which I have head. So when they go nigga, man, it, it was a joy. Everybody say, yo, long time you want to hear a drummer like me, because, you know, we, we go raw. And a pretty boy thing, we just say, yo, yeah, man, rough it up, you know? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, how did you get into the shipping industry now? <laughs> All right, the ship now. That tell us in our life, people must always do good. Not be expect something, but keep doing good. Cause you never know what happened in our life. 
All right. Me always help out person like who don't have a place to stay. Me always just say to them, say, yo, you can build with me till you get off your foot. All right, step up and just get off your feet and do and can have your own place. So uh, a lot of musicians help out and them stay at my place. So one out of the whole batch now. But about five years after, too long I never hear from him. Five years after, I see my phone a ring. And the man said, and he said to me, say, yo, I bowl of this. Say, yeah, man, I bowl of man. I said, who is this? Nash. Nash, big up yourself. A keyboard player. So Nash, man, remember you to the airport, man. Stay at your place, man. Till me get out, till me get out from my foot. And I say, oh, Zim, so a long time in the year from you, no, brother. He said, yo, you want to go on a ship? I said, what you say? He <laughs> <laughs> said, yeah, man. A long time, I well, have that feeling. And see right. what it's like in the car. Look at the time, some musician, I tell you the truth. We make you feel like say boy. I want to have this thing. Mm. Boy, you have to this, I have to that. And they don't play you because they feel like say boy. You can't do the work or you this or that, you know? Mm. And Coach Story shot, he gave me the link to an agent. We did a video. And we did the video. We get through. We, we, we did the video in November. And by January, then Carlos and say, yo, they're ready for February. And we didn't get to go even February because the singer. Something they happened to him, so we tell them, say, yo, here what? We as Jimmy, me personally, I take it up. And that's for them. Mm. I take it in mind and say, um, we as Jamaican, we love our mother dearly. <laughs> and if it was for me, I wouldn't go. So his mother was very ill. So I tell them, tell them that the band not going to get to do this contract. And they keep mm. calling, calling, sending email. Till one of the time, they couldn't get to me. So they start put it on Facebook, you know. They put it on Facebook and everybody that who knows me, <laughs> call me down and say, yo, the company I ask you, you know? Then right. we talk to the singer and he all right, my come. So we did it, we get a contract for July the 1st. And it was, it was in Europe. And it was a great run, man. First ever been into Europe. Awesome. It was a great run, you know? All right, where, where are some yeah, of the places that, that you have actually traveled to, being on the ship? All right, we go France, Italy, Spain, we go um this we go Birmingham, we go Gibraltar, you know, mm. and, and a couple more places like we go on the border, what they call Morocco, near Africa. Mm. <laughs> whoa, whoa. And then whoa. we have to we do that run we come to the Caribbean. So we go some a lot of places in the Caribbean, we go St. Martin, we go Cuba, not Cuba, what's the place name? Haiti. Hey, they have an island in Haiti, my tell us. I want nice to uh, hungry rich people alone go this one. I tell them hungry rich people alone go this one, brother. Awesome, we go man. Honduras. Yeah, we go some places there, brother, where I say, boy, music. Give them yeah, man. music, man. So where, where has been the, the, the mm. most um, memorable place that, that you have been to? For me personally, I tell you, say, yo, Barcelona. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, my boss, you know what I yo, it's a job. I see myself like boss, you know what I mean? I said, boy, yo, mm -hmm. <laughs> wait for this thing, whenever I get to go into the stadium, say fool, okay, do a keyboard player. Yeah, man, money based when you get to go into the stadium, yeah, okay, all right. So, mm -hmm. what what is it about Barcelona um, that, that makes you, you know, enjoy yo, going yo, there so much? The place, you know, the place is beautiful, you know. Yeah, man, the, if you see the building them in Barcelona, yeah, you, you, you'll be like, wow, they're very nice, man. And the people here, once they, once they hear a talk, so I always say to people, say, yo, nobody with a pretty, pretty, yeah, try, pretty, pretty, yo. Be a Jamaican anywhere you're going, I will. <laughs> and if you hear, say, man, I love your accent. I said, yeah, man. They say, yeah, man, Mr. One Love Man, don't worry about that thing, man. <laughs> And they say, yeah, Bob Marley. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, All right. Um, all of us, it, it was good um sharing some of those experiences with you um concerning your journey as a pro drummer. All right, I, I know you you, yeah, you 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 brought a topic for us tonight. Um what can you tell yeah. us what the topic is? Your topic is all about the catch and the one drop mm -hmm. in the card. As I tell you, me, big, well, I'll be for me with that. Big up Dave Primetime Green, because the man say, all for the culture. 
So me, I have for the culture. Bam, big up yourself, same speed. Yeah, and Oral Brown. You don't know. Definitely. Yeah. If you big them up, same way, because they may listen to you, you know, man. Because they may yeah. set the work, you know. So respect is due. Yeah, man. All right. So um, yeah. at this time, I'm going to play a clip. And once the clip is finished, then you will go straight into um, your, your topic, OK? Presentation is um the first one we want to talk about is how to play the one job, you know. So why don't you take a look at this before I can explain it, you know? So let's go. Right here. I'm playing the one job. The hit note on the higher. And the groove. Yeah, so the one job now is all about the feel and the groove and how the sound. Because most time you're hearing a one job like live. I'm not going to even talk about records. I record you can do anything when you record it. When you're playing live, you're not hearing the, 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 the job in it. You're not, you know? So remember, one job you, know, you have to play with a feel and the bass, man. Is it I'm playing a little bit in front or a little behind, but still on the timing. So when you are playing the one job, you have to feel. Yeah, so you have to play it and you have to feel it. And have the dance, because sometimes you have the dance, man. It's like you just play because you're, you're, you're playing, but you have to play so that people can feel what you're playing. So one job is about the heartbeat of people, man. Let them dance. Yeah, that's, all, that's the one job for me. Yeah, so this one now that you that you're looking at is how to get the sound the stick. So all your play, I call it placement. All your placement stick on the snare to get that cut. So as you can hear. Yeah, so that one now, uh, when, when you're playing reggae, 
You don't want to hear the ka. You don't want to hear the koof. 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 No. You want to hear the ka. 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 So that the sound, when you hear that sound, that sound giving it direct to know that, yo, that, that, that the, what you call it? That's how the cross stick get. So when they hear it, they hear the ka. They have to know the placement too as well. How far you should bring your hand up to get that sound and all your holy stick and the snare to get that sound. Because sometimes people will just hold the stick away and you not get it. So you have to play that here. Ka. 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 Yeah, so that's it for me to highlight that, that sound. That's all about the sound when you're playing the one job. You're just going to just play because you're playing. You have to play and ka. Yeah, so that's, that's it for me. And remember, the stick and the kick drum, everything go together. Not one before, not one after. Everything goes together. So no matter the timing you set, <laughs> you have to keep everything together. That I had, what I call it, I had um, roots. Yeah, I call it, I had roots. Like for me, I listened to some Bob Marley, Carlton Barrett, the real original hit makers <laughs> with those I had type, I had, I am, I had beat. I'm, I'm like, yo, a lot of people call me and text me and say, yo, how do you play that I had? Because it's hard for them to really get that sound on the I had. And I have to break it down, like slow it down for them to get that sound. Because you remember, if you're playing, especially this song, them crazy, crazy ballad that I had. You know, so those were the days when I said to myself, say, yo, I need to go listen to some real roots music. If I want to play those, I had. You have to listen to some real roots music in it, man. So, cause that those are what they call it signature sound. Signature sound, especially on the ayat. God, that's that I emphasize so much on the ayat. God, that give you the sound if you're playing a, a roots music and more laid back. <laughs> yeah, man. So, you can listen to Bob Marley for, for, to get that. Um, what should I say now? To get that, that sound, you can listen to some more of Bob Marley's song and you will hear it and practice it as well. Yeah, man, slow it down and practice it. Yeah, so that, that one that you just showed a while ago is um 16 ayat. Because a lot of times I, I listen to some songs, I don't know if most of them are afraid, afraid to play 16, because 16 is a more of a wrist word. Because a lot of people, when they use your finger, you use your finger, you know, you work your finger more, but when they use the finger on your wrist, you give it that, that, that sound, the real sound. So sometimes I listen to some songs and I like the original is 16, but but that is about the live show. I don't know if I all the rare or what. But I like when I hear the song, it play about the right thing. 
That's what I'm saying. So that I can take the, that, 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 that I teach them how people who don't know how to play 16, I had, you play it as slow as possible for your being until they can get it, until you can play it at a tempo where you're comfortable. Don't start fast and then you are fighting. No, <laughs> you play it. Yeah, so that, that's another eye pattern where I would love to hear, you know, we ask them to do it. Yeah, that is sweet, 16 sweet to use, man. 16 one nice eye to use while playing reggae. Yeah, man. Awesome, awesome presentation there, Ricardo, right? And yeah, I, am, I am very happy that you brought some of these concepts to the Music Hacks Network tonight. All right, and we have yeah, some well. persons who are on Zoom. And let me also welcome the persons yeah. who are on YouTube live. These guys are going to ask you some questions now and, and talk to you directly. All right, and they're going to ask yeah, you well. some questions based on your presentation. So let me welcome the guys who are on Zoom at this time. I, I am going to ask you persons who are ask any questions you just um, indicate by using the hand raise signal and then you turn on your video and speak directly to ricardo okay the guys who are on youtube just type your your questions in the chat and i will definitely try my best to um ask ricardo to to answer your question all right so guys on zoom are there any questions for Ricardo, uh, Ricardo, how, how, how hard do you work on these um, rudiments or techniques that you have presented? Um, what, what's your practice um, schedule like? For me personally, you know, as I said, I get up in the morning, do what I have to do in the morning. And for me, anytime, because I have a jump pad and I said to myself, they always said to me, say, practice on something stuff or the jump pad. Then when you go on a drum set, you know how to get that because you already practice it at home. So for me, we spend, I will spend every day. I will spend all the day. I have a, I have a snare at home and I'll be on the snare. That makes you know, you keep tick, tick, tick at, at any tempo. So I'll be like, ka, because I want to hear the sound. Ka, all day me I play. Ka, ka, brr, bang, ka. Car. I'm up on the bed, that plate. On the bed, me a plate. When I say that is a, I have drum set, you know. So I'm using the, the bed for my drum set. So I'm just playing with the 16. I'm going to play the 8. I'm going to play a swing. Yeah. And that's how I practice differently. Until mm -hmm. I, when I go on a drum set, you now, like if I have a rehearsal now, I will reach early. Yeah, man, I reach early, man, and take out the drum, and then I start. I, I go on the drum, and I will be like, Yeah, so I, as soon as I reach rehearsal, because I don't have a jump set, so I say, okay, I have you all the time before rehearsal start. So I, as I go on the jump, man, I will do what right. I do at my home and practice it. Yeah. Awesome. Are there any um, questions from Zoom? I'm seeing quite a few persons here on Zoom and I'm still waiting. All right, JDM, we have a question from JDM. All right, JDM, you can turn on your, your microphone and your video. At this time, I and speak. Chris, who tells the amount of people and see me that night? All right, Roddy Chris says, ah. All right, man. All right. Um, well, no, what, what, what kind of sneer the advice? Um, the Germans, if you used to like the one Japan. All right. Yeah, but, um, for me, what, what I use? So you have two types, you have uh, wood and um, steel. If you, for me, what I love, I love my wood senior, I have, well, that's a board, so, you know, Jamaican, board, board senior. So it give me a real sound, roots, root sound, I use the board and then what I did to get that sound, 
I changed over the hoops. 2017, I met this um, German name, Freddie Funtin. And I listened, I saw him post a video. And when I look at the senior, the sound that they have, I said, yo, I want that sound on my senior as well. So I linked him up and he told me what to do. And I ordered this, the die cast hoop. And I changed over my original hoop and put a die cast hoop on it. And I tell you, yo, that a lot of German get a play of that, of that sneer. And they told me themselves, say, yo, they want it. Oral. Even um, well, what's his name again? Kenny Hill. <laughs> that play for Bojo. Um Lando, that play for live wire. They use it sneer, man. And they were like, yo, make it for that sneer, no man. Yo, I want roots, you know. I'm gonna say, oh, look, I'll go on, man. So if you really want to get that sound, you can buy a sneer. But as I said to you, if you want to change the hoops, it will give you that perfect, perfect sound. If you go on YouTube, right? Go on YouTube and look for Bowler Frost reggae tuning sneer. I posted a Tama Black Mikkel sneer. And um, it is the original hoop that but the die cast. And when I, I said I when I, I tune that jump very high. And I say, yo, I want that sound when it cut, it's cutting sharp. So, and that sneer right now, it almost reached 300,000 views on YouTube. So, if you really want to get a sneer that can give you that sound, check it out on YouTube, my friend. Yeah, man. So, remember, Tama, you can use Pearl and look with. But for me, Tama is the best for me, man. Tama, every day, Tama. <laughs> all right. All right. Um... Uh, yeah. yeah, man. So, so, so yeah. if 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 we can 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 link it if you have set one snare, because right now we have one snare more I set, you know. So, oh, oh, can okay, I give you some advice? All right, bowl of frost the all across the social media platform. So you know, you say you know, say Facebook, Instagram. You can just link me right and me can show you one one what to do. Cause give you a scenario. Are you from Canada? See the, see the, listen to the sneer and link me. I don't even know him. Just link me and ask me. He have a person here. And the person here just sound, ah. So he said to me, say, oh, who have a sneer sound like yours, you know? So he said to me, say, ah, what can do? So I tell him what to do. And so when he do what I tell him to do, he want to say, oh, a long time. He want the sneer for sound that way. And I posted that video on YouTube as well. Because you know, after show, the growing of other people who would like to have that sound. Yeah, man. So as I said, you can link me on Instagram or Facebook. Bowl of Frost. One and only. <laughs> All right. I uh, respect Jeremy. Yeah, All right. I, I'm, I'm now seeing Jeremy in the, in the, the, the pictures. Jeremy Campbell. And I know he's going to talk to you real soon. Yo, <laughs> Jeremy. All right. You're Jeremy. You're... You ready, Jermaine? Yes, I'm Jermaine. All right. I'm there, man. I'm there. 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 i and Jeremy and next thing up. <laughs> Jeremy and no, yeah, man. Man. <laughs> definitely. All right. Bless up yourself. Yeah. All yeah. right. We we have a question from YouTube. Big up all the persons who are on YouTube. Um Novel BC Myers over there. Godson, the chosen one, one drop drummer, Robin Henry. All right. Uh let me see. Right, big up all those persons. Now we have a Christian, and also Courtney Diedrich. We have a question from Godson, the Chosen One. How do you manage to stay motivated? All right. As I, as I always say, you know, I eat, sleep, and drink reggae music. So I tell myself that music is my life. And I home and live with that music. People are looking at me and call me artist. In the time they artist. So, so that, that tell us, boy, I'm music, Mr. I always tell myself, say, yo, 
Why I want to go on the road, you know? Even though I ship me go, I still play the road, but even though a big stage, if you say, I want to dip on, yeah, but I tell myself, say, yo, I want to go on the road. So when me do, just put in some songs, brother. Put in some songs, and anything you have, just tell yourself in your mind, say, yo, I want to jump set, I have a keyboard or anything, any instrument. Just tell yourself, say, yo, a thousands of people are playing in front. I just teach myself. Myself, and sometimes I get cold bombs just by myself. <laughs> I practice a little music and I play it. And I say, yo, yo, it's sweet. But yo, yeah, so the motivation is like, get yourself into it. Get yourself into whatever you're doing. So that's the motivation for me. Get yourself into whatever you're doing. All right. Yeah, man. Awesome. A question from YouTube again. Well, we're still waiting on some more indications from, from Zoom. But there's a question from Courtney Diedrich on YouTube. When you started playing reggae, which legendary old school drummer inspired you and why? All right. As I tell you, say, oh, me, oh, me get into this uh, Sizzla Kolonji album here. And everybody knows a Jaji. <laughs> a Jaji that we hear a play, I and mean, I say, yo, I tell you name, Firehouse Crew. Yeah, man, Firehouse Crew. Big up Jaji anyway. Then. I mean, when we hear how them, 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 the sound, them alone, the pattern, I know the man played it. Dun, 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 so, yeah, I say, yo, eh, I say, yeah, man. And then, me, me, I do some research. So, I'm going to hear some black crew, and I say, yo, I wonder who, how they play that, and I wonder who, look, they yeah, them say, I'm sly. And I say, yeah. So, I say, me, this is some sly, man. And then, me get a CD with Peter Touch. And me figure out, me call some bridging, and I say, yo, who is that play with Peter Touch? And then, tell me, um, German name, Santa Davis. And I say, eh. Santa, so I said, listen to oh, them play the song, them. And I said, yo, yeah, man, that's something I want to play too, man. So sometimes I have to play. I'm going to me here and I'm going to me like Santa, you know, man. <laughs> so I said, yo, you have to tell me, say, well, me, that's what the stage I play. So Santa, I'm going to say, I'm going to call Santa too. Because I'm going to say, well, I'm going to listen to Bob for me to do music professionally. So that's enough of them. And I tell you, so those are the drummers I, I really, really listen to back in the days. And some drummers of me look on right now and say, yo, I mean, them man, they can't teach me because our culture is what? Me, a different. And I look on them and say, is, um, this drummer, bam, we play for Junior Gang. I mean, listen to them and they, they're rolling, brother. <laughs> oh, God, I tell you, say, Carlton, piece of Carlton, they're in him. Because <laughs> they, they make the thing so like a him a play it. I said, like, no, I really think that, you know. They like a him to play it even though he's young. But a him play it, I say, yo, you listen to the man, put the thing, man. The black tooth, rent them to do 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 do. I'm like, say, yo. So I say, yo, let me big up them, man, the man. So as we say, back to the, I want to straight back to the question we asked. Sly, Santa. Yeah, man, the man there, and Georgie. Yeah, man, the man there really set the thing for me, for the level of me, we still going to listen to. Yeah, man. All right. Um, we have a question from Robin Henry. Bolo, I heard you mention Barcelona. Yeah. Give us an idea of how the Spanish crowd um, reacted um, to you performing there. All right. Why well, I tell say when it, uh, Bob Marley said this, you know, that you use some of him terms. You never crown a king in your own country. And we didn't have blood and skirt Spain. <laughs> we didn't have Spain. But I say, when you are playing reggae, that's why we must always do it and do it with the love and joy. God, the love of them give you when time we play, man. When we play on the ship, when we play, as we finish, everybody come. Oh, we love, it's like a festival. Because as I tell you, me, if you go to a hotel, 
is a show me a game. You know? I know I play because of hotel me a play. You know? I like a, any song they play, I stuck it in my head and say, you are the artist. So if I 10 different artists sang my play, I saw me do something. And the band of me and them go with them know how me play. They know how me play, they know say, boy, I want to see a show. Me a play, you know? So when we go to know me give them a show, a Ratatama and big festival, that's something I played. So them love the raw, raw culture, the raw, raw Jamaican culture, the mix, the dub wise and everything. And when you're done play, they keep in contact. We want more, we want more, we want more. And I'm like, yo, what you want now? When on a ship, you say 45 minutes, 45 minutes, because another band are going to come on. So it's like, I okay, can okay, Play. You can play one more. But otherwise, that's it. They'll, they'll love it, man. I will tell anybody. Reggae will make you travel the whole universe. I know you, I'm not even going to say the world, the universe. Ask anybody <laughs> in Jamaica what music yeah. is. Yeah, man, ask them what music is in travel. Many nations coming on the ship. Over four, no, the big ship river one, so it's over 6,000 guests on it. So that's a different nation. So you are going to get, you're giving the best of your culture, the best of your culture you're giving. So we tell ourselves that, hey, when we go out there, you know, you must have somebody do something where musically wrong, because sometimes people can get frustrated. You let us do a show that, so let us just put a smile on our face. When we finish, we can talk about it. So you have to prepare yourself to know that, hey, we are going out there for a long while. And we have to do this, and we have to have our self thought and self consciousness about it. So we have to just physically and mentally and spiritually put it put it in your head. Say, oh, we're gonna showcase Jamaica from the world platform. So we have to do our best. Yeah, man. All right, cool. Um, a, a question from your your mm. bridging novel BC. Um, Myers. Oh. He's asked. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I dig up myself. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's asking, where in the world was your best performance and which artist were you performing for? Uh, for me personally, you know, as I said, we never did tour different from me personally. I could just go on the ship. But otherwise, my favorite time playing for artists, it was um, Cesar Colongi, you know. And I think it's not, um, in Jamaica here. Yeah. Do a show and see the look for me and say, boy, two and a half hour out of high energy. And my finger wasn't blistered, nah, nothing, nothing. And, and we never did tired nor nah, anything. And the man said to me, say, yo, Jummy, anytime I come back to Nigel, anytime coming back to Nigel, you have to play. And my tell said, see the come back around many more times. And he said, yo, get the shot, Jama there. You know? That's that Jama there. Get the madman there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so from that, <laughs> energy thing, man. You can't just play. I just... So for me personally, this is one of the artists that made full jive on the stage. Yeah, man. Awesome, awesome. All right. Yeah. Any other question from Zoom? or YouTube. Um, but I, I keep asking you about the, the, the ship, you know, because I only have the this idea of being on a ship in my head. Um, when you guys yeah. venture <laughs> out there into the, the, the waters, you know, what's, what, what's the experience like, man? You know? How, how do you guys <laughs> feel, you know? Better. I'm telling you, yo. Know, yeah, me personally, me, me just make up my mind. Me make up my mind and say, yo, why I'm never too like the water thing. Never too like it, but me said to myself, say, yo, me I go there because, you know, can make some money and make a life. Because you're not paying any bills when you go on that there and you get meals straight through. So, with me personally, I make up my mind and say, yo, me I go there. But otherwise, that's why musicians them, they get seasick and they have to take pill and all these things. Uh, <laughs> you ship your boom, boom. <laughs> especially in the military oh, in Europe. Yo, I see you go boom. What I tell you, I'm playing. 
with the party, with the time with the party, the premier that play. And everybody that dance, I want to see your shit with your bloom. I saw my full on. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah. So, yo, I saw your shit for rock, man. Rock. Everybody that feels rock the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think I don't think I could do that. Honestly. I All don't right. know where, where you guys I get mean, the courage to do that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it, 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 it's a thing, man, because I'm telling you, you've you been around there. I could remember, you know, we were coming from England to um St. Martin. So it's three, nine days of stealing on the water. And I'm telling you, it's three o'clock. You can't see nothing. I, I, I don't think midnight dark like that. In three o'clock. <laughs> I cannot see nothing in the Mediterranean. Dark, dark, dark. I'm like, yo. And then we hear the captain say, ladies and gentlemen, there's a storm, so we have to slow down and probably have to go through the storm. Mirror thing. They have a saying on the ship, you know. Once the Filipinos are not scared, you have nothing to worry about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They say once the Filipinos are not scared, when everything is good. Uh, yeah, so it's a good vibe. I can tell you it's a good vibe because uh, you can make a living mm. and you play. As a, we go as a Caribbean band, so you know we're gonna do we, we do all genre music, but 90% of what we did and uh, what we do is Caribbean music. I remember saying in dinner time, we're not gonna bang and give them no energy. No, we're gonna play some nice dinner music and stuff, but in the late hours, straight hardcore, rough it up, <laughs> just mm. can, everything. <laughs> definitely, yeah, definitely. It's a good vibe. It's a good vibe. All right. Come on. All right. Um, Bolo, it 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 was great having you on this network. All right. We did enjoy the, the, the presentation that you, you you brought, and we also enjoyed yeah, the, the, the Q and A. All right. Is there anything else that you want to add? before we actually close the, yeah, the live stream. I have some point. So, um, I want, what I want to really let us, as a Jamaican musician, and want everyone who is having listening here, listen to what I have to say. It probably will take five minutes. Um, you have some musicians, whenever they go on the instrument, I have no problem with people playing other genres, but come on, let us, Craft our own. Because we hear some people playing our music overseas and even better than us, they're playing it better than us. And in the sense, we need to um, put more into our music. You see, put more into our music and hear what I said, share with each other what we know and don't criticize who's better or who's worse. Because remember, all of us start from somewhere down there till we get up there. And sometimes I just say to you when I go on YouTube and I want to learn something and I type in reggae or, you know, reggae, because I reggae, I don't mean, see no Jamaican. I have not seen any Jamaican doing it. It's all overseas people doing Jamaican tutorial. How comes we as Jamaican? Cannot do the tutorials. I'm not saying Jamaican only because out of a thousand, you have five Jamaican teaching reggae tutorials on YouTube for me. I'm just using a percentage. It's not that it's correct, but I'm using a percentage out of a thousand. You have five Jamaican and it's elders. It's not young people like we teaching reggae. What, why we as young people are afraid of teaching reggae? What is it? We are afraid that one chapter is just simple. No, it's not simple. The bang, the bubble, it's something you have to work. And the timing, it's something you have to work on. So me I implore all Jamaican. And I say, we know, and I say, we're not telling us they must not play different genre. But come, let, let us share. Because we can tell say, yo, if we did take up reggae music seriously, all of those endorsements that is going on overseas, we, we Jamaican would have got it. We are too foreign minded. Everything we see foreign people do, we're going to follow. And we now do our own. And we always say, my business, the body was a boy, ball, they didn't want box and ball, I think, ball reggae. Every musician in Jamaica that tour, 
a reggae them tour fan. A reggae them tour fan. You can ask any drummer, any keys, any bass guitar, saxophone hands, any one of them, what music they tour with, reggae. So please me ask them on them. Me see some drummers now, a roll out, and I have to say, oh, yeah, me like that. Jeremy, me say, um, be a prime time green, me say, oral brown, I push out some video, and I say, yes, man. I that no one because we have, remember, we have some young youth that come up, you know. We have some young youths coming up, and the music a drift way because because the two man play it. I'm gonna say, boy, I'm boring and him nasty nothing. No, they're checking in Europe. That's all I'm playing in Europe in Africa. Right now, Africa is the biggest reggae scene, and the Jamaica created, and Jamaica do. Nobody, yeah, man, I said, boy, if you're not face only confused and some, some rudiments like it, you know, make sense, Mr. Brother. Look at listen and see why you're here. Overseas musician practice jazz, blues, um, hip hop, that's their genre. You don't realize, you don't realize what um, Snoop Dogg did come to Jamaica, did an album and call himself Snoop Lion. And when the rich half, rich more, because he realized, oh, what? We now look for reggae. As so reggae is, we now look for the profit side or the business side and say, yo, why we need to take yourself and buckle with shoes and tight you could tighten you know, up and put more into our culture, you know, to make other people I say, yo, let me see what them have, man. So make them stay there, go along their bottom, my barrel and fight. We play this and play that. And I really say, I reggae I can't. Them sample every reggae water, everything, and put in a plane because they really say reggae have a taste. So they can ice me them cake with the reggae. So musician, me now bash nobody if you say they don't play them hip hop or them black dust or something. But come on, we are Jamaican. Do some reggae cover, please. I definitely want to thank you guys for joining us today on the Music Hacks Network. Today was a great show. Before we go, I'm asking you please to hit that subscribe icon. Hit that subscribe icon, like the video, share the video, and comment on the video.